can't hear me. Oh, can you hear me? Get this done. Let's try zero two. Using a zero three, let's try the zero two. So what this does. Zero three shows more uh, just thicker lines and the impact. Seems more uh, substantial. So we'll stick with that. Let's try zero five just to see what that looks like. Let's just try it. Let's see. How can I get over here?
Dr. Custick. Thanks, dude. Trying to get these three done and then uh, start working on start working on my paint projects. Using the side, using the side of the micron to get, to try to get a thinner line. That was a five. Oops. Now I don't know where I did my three. Oh, okay. Let's just zero two. Art acoustic. What time is it over there? I am at it's twelve in the afternoon over here. Lakewood, California, the West Coast. On the West Coast. This will probably take an hour, maybe an hour and a half to get to get these pages done. line just to give uh, the characters more energy or uh, yeah show uh, how quick these characters are moving movement I want a looser line to create movement that's what I want. But I still debate on debate on if uh, the looseness translate into movement. It's nine nine PM. Proof of time for art. Oh, yeah. For you, totally, yeah. I mostly work comfortably at, at a later time. Um, I kind of use that time for for work as much as I can. Try not to get lazy. <laughs> Don't want to be lazy about it.
think that's gonna be in black. Belt pouches. Um, knee pads. Oh, put up the knee pad. Knee pad strap thingies. Pants wrinkles. Over the years, I got used to working in the morning when the kids are in school and whatnot. But as of recently, I switched back to my old schedule, 9 p.m. one until uh, 1 to 2, yeah. Especially during the summer. Helps me avoid the heat. Oh, yeah. Temperature can play a lot. Are the... Are the... Are your kids older now that you don't have to... That you don't have to uh, work in the morning. I hate that the camera keeps refocusing. It just, I just want it to just stay focused. It looks it's so annoying. Oh, fuck, I forgot to do that. Yeah, they're. I mean, not even five, but I get a lot of help from my wife, so I can. It always. It's always good to have the help. I didn't realize she had kids. That's cool. Do you. Does anybody in your family draw? as well. Let's just put it on. Should we wait for it? Let's just wait. Um, we will play. Let's try out the zero. Let's try out the zero five.
We'll just stay at the five. Three's a little too thin. I'm wondering if I'm getting um, if I'm okay with oh, this is two, is that a five? God dang it. See, but this two is being okay. Maybe I do need to go thicker. Let me see. You know what? I think I might have had to. I think I might have to raise this next time. Yeah, I gotta raise. The, the sheet up. I'm a little bent over. I'm a bit hunched over. Or if you don't mind, I'll, I'm just gonna maybe I should just move it now. Nobody from my close fam family sent up art, but I was surrounded by a lot of art all the time. So when I told them I wanted to be an artist, they were disappointed at first. But when I got to show my talents, they changed the perspective completely. Oh boy. Yeah, my, uh, my parents just still at the disappointed part. I need to... I try to show them what I'm doing. What I'm creating, what I'm creating for other, other people. Uh, I don't think they fully understand what what I'm making. Oh well. Also, uh, if you're streaming, here's another tip: if if you're streaming, make sure the gardeners, the uh, people that mow the lawn, make sure that they're uh, they're working, so your stream can get noisy. As uh, as you're drawing.
then I'll add some. I'll add some uh, uh, cross hatching. Let's get it. Uh, let's just lay down the. Uh, It's an amorphous character, it's always changing shape. So I don't think it matters that much. My neighbor has two dogs, so whenever he does the, his lawn, he goes on a quest, finding and collecting all of the shit in the grass. <laughs> I think he really enjoys the quest part. Yeah, I, he might get off on that. People are into weird stuff. It it, it is kind of meditative when, when you do clean. Like when you clean a your room or you know tidy up uh, your desk or whatever you clear out your desk but man cleaning up shit or finding shit clearing out the lawn by taking out the shit is uh it's pretty extreme it's an extreme thing to uh, to take out that's so funny if I know that shit. I gotta find all that shit before the wife comes home. Uh oh. Some more, more shit. For this, uh, we have a uh, first panel. We got the uh, the metal metal soldier jumping over the monster, uh, about to land uh, the the uh, the fulcrum, the uh, the falling metal soldier from the jump, still shooting, still blasting away. He lands, and now he's grabbing the, the walkie-talkie that's laying, that was uh, behind the uh, monster. Also, oh, uh, Artic, oh, he has, he has this big broken shovel he puts this shit in. <laughs> And the shell is all is really suspiciously close to his face. And he picks it up by hand, just uses a plastic bag over the hand. 
he has a big broken shovel he puts the shit in and the shovel is always really close to his face maybe he's trying to uh maybe he's trying to build a uh some sort of tolerance like stinky a stinky tolerance That's wild. <laughs> I wonder if he, uh, he's conditioned his nose to it's not smell that shit. How can you, though? Oh, God, thank you so See, this is where I don't you put this here. I gotta move it somewhere on the tippy top. Okay, excuse me. Need to readjust the tape, but I don't want to let go of all the pens I'm holding. So now the tape is not staying. I'm not laying down the tape uh, parallel to the sheet. Uh, I love how the panel is developing, by the way. Very dynamic. Thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I'll give you... Uh, here's the... Uh, I'll show you uh, what's been... What's happening on this page? There's June's, June sections. Uh, previously, uh, the metal soldier uh, caught the falling gun from the other soldier that that just previously died for the last pass. Um, so he shoots the uh, monster's arm off, the arm that the uh, that was uh, holding the dead soldier. The monster is uh, the monster is reacting to the to this arm being shot off. Uh, there's a lot of drool coming out of his uh, mouth, and like looks like also sweats coming out. But it also has because his arm is being shot up, off has a uh it's almost like he's crying and now the monster is uh is uh, upset by our metal soldier so these these are more uh moments of the story getting shot off reacting get uh reacting and then getting upset confronting confronting a soldier this one I decided to uh, get uh, sequential where you have uh, uh, you know a movement where you have the you can also see here that the, the hand is slowly uh, growing back so I continue that growth uh, monster trying to reach I don't know why he wouldn't reach with his uh, unshot arm, but he's reaching with his broken arm. Our metal soldier is jumping, jumping up, and uh, you have this curving effect that leads into the next panel. The uh, monster now is has swung this arm this way as the soldier has uh, jumped, and is now falling this in this trajectory still getting blasted we also get um the direction of the jump by the gun blasts and then uh landing the metal soldier landing grabbing the walkie-talkie that was behind 
this guy, which was established in June's uh, previous, 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 uh, June's previous page, panels in the previous page. Um, so you have that. Uh, the cape is creating some movement, moving out. So knowing that if, we're, if the viewer, if the eyes are leaving out, where else can you go but back? down to here to finish off the, the page, to finish off the story on this page, and then June giving us uh, pretty much a, uh, a splash shot of the metal soldier calling into uh, the walkie-talkie. And again, the walkie-talkie is on the right side the bottom right of this overall image, the walkie-talkie is on the bottom right of this overall image. Um, also, uh, you know what, let me just move this up a little bit, just to, just so that I'm not hunched over. Give me a minute to adjust this. Uh, curves look like a skipping stone. Yes, 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 yes. Very good, uh, very good uh, uh, analogy. Big curve in the first two images, and the small and a small curve on the third in the cloak. Oh, yeah, I didn't even realize I did that. I and yeah and such so there's a momentum of the of this character following into into this position so yeah there, and then with the gun blast uh, uh, there's an obvious curve there and the reason why I curved the cloak out this way was to not uh to, to to move the viewer to move on to the next three panels but also uh, conversely like if if the, the cape was flowing this way the cape the cape was flowing this way I think that would have still you know that that might still help the like this this can get led in by the cape to, to this character that you know that might help too but i also kind of like that this like if he landed the cape would have been the cloak was still this way but now that it's in this position it's the next step he lands let's say he lands with his his left foot with this left foot but now that he's stepping with his right it would be the next moment after he landed he, he's already landed he's running towards the walkie-talkie maybe i'm just like trying to make sense out of it why i put this thing but it this furthers or uh um repeats the movement that this is creating Better to be contrasted, yeah, than rather than creating the tangent. Yeah, it would be a tangent. Yeah, and even still, like, you have this. This is almost helping, this cape movement is almost helping us go, go here anyways. Yeah, because even if I did that, like, what if I, and if I did this... The cape being down here looks like that. Um, it doesn't have a falling effect. Yeah, a cape is light and it's a light fabric, so we can move any any way. But then to have it down here looks like uh, I just turned this figure upside down with the cape. Uh, if this was the ground, then the cape uh, opening the the law of gravity and going down that way which would be pointing up but better to have the cape pointing going towards 
gravity to also help uh, this this draw the character here uh, define it where it's actually it's following falling rather than jumping here like where it's happening here. Yeah, and it's all. This is another. Uh, I guess the position of this cape is also another example to just go with your first answer, um, like with tests. If you have, you have a multiple choice uh, answer and you pick, you have your first pick but you still keep looking at the answers and you kind of have now a second choice. It's usually your first inclination is usually the f correct answer if you study for the test. So going with this, uh, it is, yeah. And then you also confirmed it too. It's better to have contrasting rather than tangent this still makes sense but it's just too close too close too on the nose also our uh, our acoustic i uh i have a question for you about drawing lines drawing geometric things uh Without a ruler, do you use a ruler or do you use, uh, do you not use a ruler when you're drawing geometric shapes? I will use a ruler when I'm penciling something, which I just did not do. But if I want something, uh, uh within, you know, correct geometry. I will use a ruler for the pencil, but then when I'm, um, but then when I ink it, I will go, I won't use a ruler. I'll just use the, the pencil as my guide. June is great, fantastic style, very street-like. Yeah, it, yeah, June's is very street. Yeah, it does have that, uh, Graffiti, hip hop y feel to it. Great use of black. Oh, yeah, June. Yeah, June is a. Uh, June's uh, using black, yeah, really well laid. Look at that. That to pop this out. That's perfect. And you don't, you don't need to know what this needs to look like. We already have the sense of it up here. And then June repeating it here just to bring our eyes up here. Uh, the black also gives uh, the character weight, even though there's no shadow, it still looks planted. Uh, putting shadow here so we could focus up here, creating depth, contrast, and then the, uh, down here in the splash, heavy contrast. Heavy contrast to define the, the shapes. And then cutting in with a white gel pen to uh, continue to continue the uh, the rib pattern, but then also opening up, not drawing the rib pattern here to suggest light. That's cool. Very good. I mostly draw digitally nowadays, and even still, I don't use straight lines. When I draw on a paper, I rarely use it. I love when the lines are a bit squiggly. I think it has more soul when done without rulers. Even, even when you're drawing buildings, I did this drawing earlier today to test out that uh what, what what you just said i 
but I did still use rulers to pencil. But when I painted ink this, I did not use rulers. I was just using the pencil lines as a guide. At first, this was a, uh, I was like trying to find the center of uh, the, the overall sheet, but then uh, I wanted to practice more on the, on perspective. I'm working on a comic that will, that has a, a bunch of uh, splash pages, single splash and double splash pages of backgrounds. There's this, a, a cityscape that is part of the story or it like showcases the world that these characters live in and uh i wanted to practice and see if doing this inking lines without a straight edge without a ruler if it look if it looks i i wanted the lines to be natural and automatic i just it's automatic natural lines no ruler. Or oh, I was trying to determine if this is okay or if this looks too sloppy. Even when doing yeah, even when doing buildings. Wow. I love how architect watercolor sketches look. It still indicates what the thing you are drawing is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I totally get that. The viewer knows that it is a straight edge, even though it doesn't need to be. Yeah, I think I will continue, continue this. I was looking at uh, Deathburger. You probably already know Deathburger, right? On, on Instagram. Then I also pulled out, I also pulled out, uh, Jeff Darrow's uh, pencil pencil book and both of them do not both of them appear like they don't use rulers when they're inking it's very ooh, very good The lines are loose. The lines are loose and it doesn't look sloppy. These aren't, they're loose, they're, they're natural lines, but they don't look sloppy. I think I'm just like looking, just thinking too much about me physically drawing those lines and to me, uh, they feel sloppy because I am not using a ruler. I, what I even used to do too is that I will, uh, oh, I will also, uh, there would be times where, here's the, here's a pencil, a pencil line, and I will, I'll uh, vary the degree of pressure I put with the ink line. To create a, uh, a non, um, what do you, God, I hate when I don't know the word. A non-uniform line to create that non-uniform line. See how like I kind of put a little bit of pressure on there. But the thing it, with this is that I have to is that I'm using I'm using the straight edge every time. I'll use the straight edge, I'll use, I'll use the ruler, I'll use it for, 
for penciling, for laying out the perspective lines, because I have to, I just have to, and um, to lay in the major, the major, uh, the major landmarks on buildings. I'll do that. And then put that like on this one that I did earlier this morning. Like this was a ruler, this was a ruler, this was a ruler, this was a ruler. The contour line of the windows, that's ruler. Uh, uh, the vertical lines here was ruler and then this was ruler. The diagonal lines, no, I just did it by hand. But then I inked everything by hand still. Um, now this, this stripe here, no ruler, but I was approximating these lines going towards uh, a vanishing point uh, in, in reference with, oh shit. This stripe line, I was no ruler, but I was using these lines, the surrounding lines, to help me guide for where this stripe would go. And then, uh, no ruler when I, when I inked it, obviously. I do like it. I just don't like I get scared, like, where this building meets this other building. If this area becomes uh, complicated, but subconsciously I made it not complicated by keeping the contour here, this area surrounding the contour, this area, I kept it bare because if I added more shit here, that would confuse. I would have to be very careful in what lines I put here so as to not confuse the viewer to know that this isn't this is these buildings recede behind this building i even messed up here with the w with the top of the letters here where i wasn't following the space here the space here with the s i did but then with the h look how much space is here. It should have been where I corrected it. Fuck, I just always like learning stuff and getting used to it. Even when doing build- oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... Yeah, maybe I'll just go about doing that. I mean, I just did it here because, uh, of what I tried this morning. I just gotta get used to it. I gotta get used to it and just know that it's okay.
I'm getting it close. Oh no, it's all in red.
Whenever I tried inking, I hated the result. I always wanted to go achieve the Esteban Moroto. Yeah, I know. Yes. Esteban Moroto and Sergio Topi. I know. But when I realized I'm stylistically different, I just used their work as an inspiration. Yeah. Yeah, I really think that is what I'm going through now, wanting to be like the art I like, but just being stubborn about it. Yeah, I probably just can't. And my style's different. That's that's what must that's what must be it. That must be it.
Nicholas, thanks. Thanks, dude. Thanks for coming in and watching this. How's it going? How's it going? What are you what are you up to? Zero two. Marks fucking with uh, the gunshot effects. Is it confusing? Going well, my parents dropped coming across so, oh my god, personal project I'll be working on all summer. Wow. Congratulations. Get that going. Um, how many pages? How many pages will your comic book be? Have you done other comics as well? Dang it, these gun blasts are gonna get, look like they might get hidden. Put the hatch marks up to it. I think one way to do this is to bring it. Helping a little bit. Oh, that's what it is. I overextended it. It just needs to be this.
40 page one shot. Wow. And you've done two 12 pagers. What are the, what are two things, all right, what are two things you like about, or you enjoy about drawing comics? And what are two things that you think you should improve when you're drawing these comics? When you're drawing these comics of yours? I like coming up with the I like coming yeah, coming up with uh, what what goes into the panels. Although I also find that difficult as well. I like the challenge of finishing a comic. But I also hate I hate when I get stuck. Like I wish I remembered everything that I've read. I wish I can just access, like quickly access a reference that would work in the, the particular story that I'm trying to visualize. I always think about, I always think about that question or those questions. But I enjoy, I like when, I can figure out the story visually. Whatever the writer gives me visually showing that even or like adding to the writer's story contrib contributing towards the world building that the writer is is uh, has initially created for example like if there's a scene where the writer has two characters talking and they're talking in in the setting is in an apartment like filling up that apartment making it look like it's a lived like it's been lived in or some time. Like coming up with that, that's the fun part. It adds to who the characters are. It helps. Yeah, it really helps who this sells the characters rather than making them look like two two people just talking to each other and it creates a why they're saying those things they're saying but conversely you could also be saying that that's the that's the hard part Two things I love, combining ideas and concepts and presenting them in a story you've designed all your own, yeah, yeah. Uh, being able to direct scenes and act out lots of strange characters, aiming to evoke an emotion in the reader, yeah, those are good points. Those are good points. Those are good points to always uh, consider every time definitely every time you're coming up with a story and the visual that would present
present that story. You got it figured out. You got it all figured out. Did you publish your comics? I'm curious to see what you made. Yeah, let us know. Nicholas, uh, what your, what your handle, what your screen name is on Instagram, or you could even, uh, plug it here in the chat, if you got a website, plug it here in the chat, I want to see it. Two things I want to improve on what really getting down story structure and making entertaining characters and page layout. God damn, yeah, that page layout can be difficult sometimes. Sometimes you get lucky and you immediately know. composition and where things should go but other times especially in the boring uh, sections or the or the sections where it's just talking moving that camera around the environment making uh, <laughs> two people talking uh, how do you make that visually compelling even in the action scene how do you pro properly show characters finding each other in a way that's readable for the for the uh, For the, for the reader. One thing I need to try to improve is talking and drawing when streaming. It's hard for me to focalize in an appropriate, oh, it's a fuck, in an appropriate time what I what I want to say like right now it's just I just keep pausing because I'm trying to concentrate on the line but I also want to say what I want to say maybe I just have a small brain I, how do you make a big brain how do you I need to make a big brain I want a big brain about you what are your two things to improve and also who are two artists who inspire you right now I am always thinking of Simon Bisley and Sam Keith I write down some Japanese artists um, I also uh, think about as well.
these people always running, always, I always think about these artists immediately, and Mignola too. I always notice uh, the Japanese guys, I love their character design. Um, but these other guys, I pay attention to their, the style, obviously, Simon and, uh, Sam Keith, their style, uh, Jeff Darrow, Jack Kirby, and Mike Mignola, I pay attention to the composition This is the competition of uh, com composition of how they approach layout, how they approach uh, sequential um, action movement, where they pr place characters. I also have the uh, obligatory Wally Woods twenty two panels that always work. And the characters are are drawing, are, are talking. Did you read Dios Amante from Jodorowsky and Gal? No, I never read that down. Man, our cost, you, you, you always come on with like, books that I know who the, the people that are who make the books, but I don't know the exact book. I do like, uh, what's his name? Juan? Him. Menes, maybe it was the S. He's good too. But I'll check out the Jodorowsky. Hey, Jodorowsky's good too. Where he comes up with cool ideas. I don't know how well the story is though. He's a good uh, visual list. I think this is okay, huh? Yeah. The black, the thicker lines helped. Definitely helped. What's my inspiration is Japanese right now? I could see it's around. It's like my idol, seriously. Oh, my God. Yeah, there was like the early, or the, uh, the 2010s where I would draw, continuously draw. I still do it now, not as much but i st still love drawing those helmet helmet girls the helmet ladies the helmet people after that hiroko araki naoki urasawa ichiro oda for storytelling okay boichi and torada for art style i can let me Those names down. It's time for names. One of the is on my list, also, Mike Mignola. Freddy Carrasco? Freddy Carrasco, I don't know that. Is 
Instagram uh, opened up just the artist world even more. It also reminded me like all the other artists that I totally forgot about. You need to draw a little sun in the corner like the cool kids do it. Oh, like, uh, Hiroki Hirohiko Araki is the creator of Jojo's Bazaar. Oh yeah, okay. I know that. I did not know the artist name. He wrote a book on how to make shonen manga. It's like my Bible right now, really? Okay, I'll look that up. Do you know the name of that how to make manga book? Whoa, wait, what's the name? Yuriko Araki. Oh. I love that style. I love the Jojo style. I love Felipe Drillier and his insane scenes. It's just straight from some oh, some acid fueled dreams. Oh, I love F Felipe Drillier. His stuff is so good. I, I, I will look at it. I will look at his stuff and I would try to incorporate it find some way to incorporate it into my work and i just cannot find the opportunity the opportunity to to do that but maybe someday there was one point where i kind of did that on uh, when i was doing a layout uh a layout for uh skinner's uh, one of Skinner's stories for his next uh, skin crawl book. I helped him with uh, with layouts on on one one of those stories, and there's only just one moment that I got to put to use implement a Felipe Julier. composition really the book's called manga in theory and practice You guys also, uh, you probably already know, but um, dang it, what's his name? Naoki Urasawa, right? Is that the guy's name? Naoki Urasawa is a, a TV show on mangaka. Are you guys watching that or, or already? Really nice to hear from a successful mangaka exposing his process to make long running series, yeah. I like studying uh, the manga, the manga uh, stories, the books, because they have, they follow a different uh, form, a different almost outlook of how comics are presented. I noticed there's like a, just a little bit more close up shots and a lot of speed lines. I know that's a, a stereotype, but that's what I noticed. But they use it to an effect that makes sense in the storytelling, and the storytelling lends more to using speed lines, directional lines, uh, close-ups, splash pages, when there's like a huge moment. 
happening. But then you could turn the page and it'll be like another huge moment happening. And uh, I mean, Masamune Shiro, he'll put like realistic, uh, still stylized, uh, cute face uh, characters, but his sense of uh, vehicles. He's a really good, knows how to like draw really good vehicles. And then the next panel will just be chibi style versions of, of his characters talking to the reader, breaking that fourth wall. But the story is nothing comical. It's dealing with uh, war, hacking, ghost in the shell, you know. Monben, yeah, Monben, that's what it's called. You wish they were dubbed? Yeah, I wish those were dubbed too. I will have to like, I will watch them when I'm watching stuff. I'll like fit it into my watching part of the, the, the day, which is most of the day because I just love to procrastinate. Oh, that's one of the things I need to improve on. That I constantly need to improve on is, is uh, procrastinating. I hate that I do that, but I love doing it. Uh, like, this is kind of... This is kind of me procrastinating on uh, the, uh, the paid work I'm, that I need to be doing. Don't snitch, though. But it is getting this done. This is a... Uh, um, Nicholas, I don't know if I, you already know, but uh, this is the collaboration comic I'm doing with my friend June uh, where uh, it's a collaborative comic where we both we go back and forth three panels each uh, to tell a story a single story the only manga I read is Ghost in the Shell yep Ghost in the Shell Masumune Shiro Masumune Shiro I did watch a few animes and that is all really and I, I know there is some really good shit out there but i just can't manage it all yeah totally art acoustic i totally understand the only mo uh uh anime that i'm into was um uh the ghost in the show was good akira ninja scroll Cyber City, Oedo 909. Uh, Studio Ghibli stuff, that's always good. Uh, what else is there? Street Fighter 2 the anime, because I'm just a nerd. Uh, what other anime? One Punch Man was good. I only saw the first season, but that was good. I wasn't into Naruto. I wasn't into Dragon Ball Z. There's too much hype on that stuff to made me not want to see it. I've seen enough at the conventions that I go to. I, I get my feel like, you know, I get it. It's just like being overpowered, an overpowered character being beaten and then watching that character train to overpower the overpowered character. OP versus OP. Yeah, I love about manga, how the style changes to communicate, to communicate the feeling better. Nice. How many pages is this comic the story this story is uh only 16 but i think it might be a little bit more because it's a long story but long story short we were on hiatus on this comic june picked it back up uh, but when he picked it back up the, the numbering of the pages that he put down it was off so i think this might be this might be 18 pages long, I want to say. But uh, he still needs to, uh, I'll have to give, when I'm done with the, all the drawings, all my, when all my sides are, because June finished all his sides. So when I got those back, I had to fill in 
everything in between what June already put down. Originally, we were going back and forth, but June wanted to get this thing finished, because I was just taking forever on it. We were both working on our pay stuff. But June found time to finish his sides. I didn't. Well, I am now. I just finished all the... I recently finished all the pencils for my side. So now I'm streaming... Now I'm streaming the... The inking process. The inking session. Um, I would stream the pencil process but man that, that would I think that would just be taxing on the on the viewer because it would just be a lot of me trying to figure out what what to draw I I, I think too much before drawing and then when I do end up putting something down, I keep redrawing it. The thing, the, the cool thing about comics is that you get to draw anything you want. The bad thing about comics is that you get to draw. There's so much opportunity to draw what you want. Like, I don't know how long it took me to get to this, to this, uh, decision. To show this, then to show this, then to show this. I think it took a while. And this did not outright, uh, uh, come to me immediately when I got to this section of the story. Now I knew, because June drew the top and he drew the bottom, that all I knew is that the, the, that this guy, our metal, metal face guy here, gets the radio. Now I had to show him, now and, and I decided for my panels was to show him uh, uh, get behind, to, to have them get behind him to grab the, to grab the walkie-talkie. Did I say microphone? To grab the walkie-talkie. I think at first I was just gonna have them skid underneath the monster. I grabbed the walkie talkie as he as he was sliding. I don't know if I even drew that. Let me just fill in this spot black. Let me just spot this black real quick. Oh, that's that. Oh, shit. Okay. I'll show you what else I... Another thing I was using. I would go on these. I would exercise and I'll exercise. Oh, I'll walk. I try to walk every day for exercise. But during... Uh, the time to come up with my side of the story, I brought a pencil and I also brought this little uh, book where I graded out my panels, you know, to mimic the final page. But what I brought, but what I did was tr I would try to come up with the different uh, panel layouts. This and this, it's, it, no, I know it's hard to read and you can't make out like what, what's happening. But this three panels and this three panels, 
is depicting one one section of the story so i was like trying to figure out like does it look like this does it look like this and i did it again here i just when you can kind of tell a little bit this is a, a truck that's leaving this is pretty much what the panel became what i what i penciled out and in, in inked in the previous page so i got from here i went from here and i went to to here and i gelled a little bit more i was like okay i think i figured it out so that's why these pens are a little bit tighter and then at this point this is the next three panels and i think i this kind of came to me relatively quick where it helped me not have to draw so much in this panel i can just all i need to draw was this but to keep movement and to keep uh, the cartooning element of the comic, the sequential part of the comic going, the storytelling, just have different uh, directions that this head's moving, have this character run past where you don't even see him anymore, so it's creating that movement. Uh, the head is reacting to uh, the different situations that are occurring in every panel. There's another sequential uh, storytelling uh, uh, thing where you can have the monster growing so you show it small so it's less than half the panel size have it growing even more where it's just slowly moving past half the panel and then fully grown where it's the full taking up the full panel um i think that's all i that's all i did and then here's a, a previous uh, version of that where it's still small but then here it's almost taking up the whole panel then being a full full figure on on the whole panel but between these two no real uh no real change in the space that's being taken up yeah this is one's filled out more this one just has the uh, arms extended but the arms is almost as high as this figure so there's no real it's like a plateau rather than what happened here the moving up so i would bring this i would bring this with me as i uh as i went on my walks but then i also brought then i printed out the actual pages uh, with June's drawings uh, in the position that, that they were in. And uh, here's another version of the uh, of this. As you can kind of see. This is, has the, the truck, the monster coming out of the truck, the tentacle coming out truck. The truck is, uh, is has is still go moving into the space of the environment. The soldier is uh, has been uh, gets hit by the tentacle and uh, uh, is thrown off the truck. The soldier is landing on uh, landing head first onto the ground as the truck is uh, uh, speeds away with the monster still growing. Here was the original or the previous uh thing i came up with where we see a close-up shot more close-up a closer shot of the truck with the the tentacle and the soldier the truck driving away almost on the same i think it will, oh yeah it is the same plane just to create some sequentialism the truck leaving Kind of like how this is, guy is leaving in the same space. This truck is leaving in, in the same space. The so, soldier getting uh, thrown off by the tentacle and then him just landing with no truck because the truck, we're in this, this every shot of here is the same camera, the same position, but the truck's gone so we don't see it anymore. The truck has moved past this area so we don't see it anymore. And you see the soldier there. And then the next panel, the soldier then running towards 
the camera or towards us and then the soldier running away from, from us and the camera. And here's the, uh, here's, this page is what I'm currently working on. I didn't get up to there because then I switched, I switched processes, the layout, uh, sketching out, pencil process to figure out what I wanted to do. <coughs> I wish I had patience for traditional drawing. Oh, I can't see. I missed all this shit. They just go like here, it goes to the shell, Apple Sea, Detroit Metal City. Oh, what's Detroit Metal City? Vampire Hunter D. Yeah, I see that. That was a good one too. Cowboy Bebop. Oh, that, that was a good one too. Fits in the North Star. I saw a little bit of that. Studio Ghibli Stuff 2. So, any recommendation is most welcome. I wish I had the patience for traditional drawing. I know. You can get tedious. Can't Cowboy Bebop. Okay. Vampire Hunter D is a fave of mine. I'd suggest Naoki Urasawa's monster is actually a masterpiece. Really? It, uh, is that monster anime or just the manga? If you like Cowboy Bebop, check out Samurai Champloo. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'm going to like Samurai Champloo. I see the same flip book thing when planning a comic. Yeah, I think you have to like. I like drawing it like super small. Uh, something that Steve Rude. Steve Rude is another uh, comic artist. He said like if if. Oh shit! What did I just put up? If the drawing works at this scale, hey, this is how big my finger is. This is my thumb. If the drawings work at this scale, if it you can still read it this small, then it'll always read just as well when the drawing's big. Now, if the drawing doesn't read well when it's big, then no one else is going to read it. If it doesn't make sense to you, then it's not going to make sense to anyone else. I over-rendered this, but I'm going to take it back. Always, uh, non-stop, always work on, on anatomy. I always gotta keep up on anatomy, especially when you're drawing figures in different positions constantly. You need to know where all the muscles go, where the bones are to hold the muscles every time every time then just the uh, See, do I need to put, to spot the black, do I put that shadow in here? Or is it okay without it? I think it's okay without it. It doesn't less complicated with the shadow.
think that's it. I think this is all I need to do. Oh, I thought it was gonna be an hour. It's an hour and a half. Well, I think it was an hour and a half, or or two hours actually. I think it was two hours because I started talking. I also pulling back, looking at the whole thing helps rather than staying too close. You can keep concentrating on one area, but once you pull it out, it doesn't. You don't read it as much. But I think we're good. I think this is my favorite panel. This one's okay. There's a lot of things happening here. Maybe uh, this, the floor needs to be. In black, are you gonna? I'll. I'm gonna color it digitally. Uh, if you scroll all the way, like back, 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 are you? Uh, in my Instagram, or if you go to my reels, my the reels part of the Instagram, the reels page of my Instagram page, you can scroll back and then you'll see uh, the Doomsday Curse. Uh, these pages in color or the previous pages in color yeah I'll color it yeah June and I will color we, we will color our own uh, our own uh, sections so June will color the top June will color his panel on the bottom and I will color this and what I in the beginning what I did I would use the exact same colors that June was using and then later um, realizing that June draws in his style and I draw in my style I can it's okay for me to use my colors my color palette like if this guy if June colored this guy in blue I will use a blue I won't use his exact blue not anymore but I will use a blue to uh, let the v reader know that this guy, th the blue guy, is June's. Is also June's uh, blue guy that, that he drew in his uh, in his section. And because blue is uh, you know it's a primary color, it's not gonna be. It won't be difficult to figure out like who's who. color each other's ink i mean we could do that too i think we'd probably i think we we could do that on another project what i kind of want to do is i want to ink uh june's drawings and i want him to i want him to ink my drawings i would be very curious to see what that looks like and i'm gonna color this I'm gonna color just black just to pop this out. To pop this out more. I think that'll be it.
Yeah, see how that's... It really popped it out. Instead, nah. Let's add some white. I also want to... There's a section on, on June's panels. I think I'll help him out. And he had this white out. He covered it in a white out, but it, it still peeked out. So I'm thinking I'll just, oh, let's help out June now. Put some white out on that. Help him out. Help him out a bit. Let's just help him out a bit. Any other areas for a whiteout? No, I don't think so. Well, for June, we'll use the heavy duty stuff because uh, we don't need to be. It doesn't need to be. There's no thin lines. Beautiful. Here it is. Art Acoustic Nicholas, thanks for <coughs> hanging out. Watch me get this done. Hopefully, I can. Up on Twitch again soon, possibly in the coming days, and get to another three panels. Get this done. We need to get this done. But that'll. Time for me to take off. I'm gonna have some lunch and then go on my walk bring this maybe for like other ideas if I have any other ideas oh here's a here's a little tease to the other comic that I'm working on this was a a lottery ticket that I designed to use as reference for uh, for some panels and I used my own uh, I took photos of, of my hand in this position. Uh, the character, had, we have the character in the story is like scratching off the lotto stuff. And uh, will this character win? I had like some photos of the scratching. So then, uh, I penciled it in, but when I do the scratching, I'm, I'm gonna use the, uh, the, the manga, you know, that manga, uh, movement lines where it's all blurry where it's like doing that you know always fun talking comics thanks for streaming it was an inspirement also you kept me company while I was working on my stuff oh yeah definitely uh check out our caustic's work We're really looking forward to the book he's working on a RPG book with a bunch of drawings with the characters um landscapes too right i just want the books i just want i just want the art i just want the art i'm going to treat it as a as an art book 
Did I win? I can't say. I can't say. But uh, here's a hint. I'm still... I'm still working on... I st on my projects for money, so... I should give you a hint if... Uh, a hint if, uh, if I won or if I lost. I lost. Can't wait to read both. I, I can't wait. Can't wait to read both. I can't wait to get you done. I got this. I gotta get this done. Do all the inks. Uh, return it back to June. Get it all scanned. Uh, then I'll color my size digitally, and then it will be done. Then just, we still gotta figure out like what else are we gonna put into the book? Because I don't know if it's gonna be substantial enough just to have a. 16 page 18 page story i think we need to just beef it up just a little bit more maybe open it up to a, a pinup section i already know who i want to ask to do the pinups uh, and pinups not just for this book but for books uh in the future as well but that's that's another conversation that that's gonna have to happen later Thank you all for watching. Until next time. Until next time. Time on the fucking time on the fucking time.